So this particular problem looks at data that involved a study that investigated whether or not the color of helmet one wore had any um, relationship to whether or not the, uh, the injury one suffered upon a, an accident, a motorcycle accident, was severe or not. So is there any contingency or relationship between the color of helmet worn and whether or not the injury was severe. Um, and so we're looking, this is a, a contingency or a, a test of, of, of dependence. So with these tests, um, the null hypothesis will always be the assumption of independence. So how can we turn that into a statement? Our test has to have the word independence, and we have two variables, helmet color and um, and whether or not there was an injury. So is whether or not you get an injury independent of your, the color of the helmet? So that can be set up as a, as a hypothesis test. Injuries and helmet color are independent. Your null hypothesis will always be a statement of independence. Now we have a table of observed values. We're going to use our um, our calculator to generate another table of expected values or expected counts. Um, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. But over here we have observed. So what we're going to do is take this information and populate it into matrix A, put it into our calculator, and your calculator will generate the expected values. Once we get observed, um, once your calculator calc generates the expected values, it will also go into each cell and do the observed minus the expected squared divided by expected and do that for the 498 and his expected value, the 381 and his expected value. So these expected values are based upon the assumption of independence. Um, and we won't do this by hand. Like I said, we'll use the calculator to generate those, um, that sum, and it's of um, not nine terms, one, two, three, four, five, ten different terms are going to um, be used to calculate that sum. And once we get that test statistic here generated from our calculator, we're going to need to compare this test statistic that we get to, I like to call this my kind of uh, rubric. So I need a critical value by which I'll make a decision to reject or not reject um, my null hypothesis. So what is my critical value? I'm going to have to use my chi-squared table and I'll have to go in at alpha equals 0 0.01 and my degrees of freedom will be r minus 1 times number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. Number of rows is 2, so 2 minus 1. Number of columns is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 minus 1 is 4, so the degrees of freedom is 4. So using the 4 and the point zero 0.01, we can get our critical value. So let's grab that using our 4 for our degrees of freedom. And using alpha equals point zero 0.01 okay, for our level of significance, so point zero 0.01. And where those two intersect is the 13.277. So that is our critical value, 13.277. So the only thing left is to go ahead and calculate our test statistic 
using our calculator to see if we fall into the rejection region um, by which at which point we would then um, reject the assumption of independence um, so let's see where we are I'll punch those into the calculator so to get those values you're going to go to second matrix and you would go in here to edit make sure the size go ahead and drop in the correct size one two right always do rows before columns rows before columns you walk before you fly so we have our two by five um, drop in the numbers we get our matrix a we go ahead then and we can go back to doing our statistical test um, so it's going to be a chi-squared test so selecting numbers or select selecting C is um, we're not doing a goodness of fit we're doing a contingency test a test of independence and that's just simply the chi-squared test um, we put in matrix A and then observe expect it is going to be the output of the calculator so we don't have to do anything here but other other than just simply specify well where we want the data to be stored so let's go ahead and generate the test statistic and we get 11.23 so we have 11.23 and that value 11.23 and P.02 so let's look at this um, there's a contradiction here we have a, a p-value of 0 0.02 which is um, greater than 0 0.01 so our p-value is telling us it's not low enough um, for us to reject the null hypothesis but our chi-squared uh, statistic of 11.23 um, is telling us to not reject the null so I, th I think we're consistent both of these are saying do not reject the null hypothesis um, I think we're good here so let's do that 11.23 is over here um, and then also our p-value is not low enough Right, our p-value um, equals 0 0.02 which is greater than alpha so both of those are telling us to reject to um, to not reject we do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis so we do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis so let's summarize that with a statement so we'll state the summary in terms of um, this null hypothesis. There's not enough evidence to reject the claim that injuries in helmet color are independent. So that was the claim, and we didn't find enough evidence to reject that claim. So that would be the, the statement there.